Hello friends, welcome to another video and in this video I want to talk about the most important service in AWS that is EC2 or Elastic Compute Cloud. Okay, so EC2 is actually uh, ECC, so C is coming two times but we write it as EC2. Okay, so let's understand the meaning of this word first. So the meaning of uh, Elastic is, Elastic means this service can scale itself when needed. Okay. And you will see this word with a lot of different services in AWS like Elastic Beanstalk, Elastic File System, Elastic Load Balancers and there are some other services as well. So the meaning of Elastic is this service can scale itself when needed. Just remember this. Okay. Then the meaning of Compute is it's going to give you the compute resources like CPU, RAM, storage, etc. So all these are compute resources and this is a compute service. Then the meaning of Cloud is it is using the AWS's global infrastructure, which is for cloud. Okay, so, so that's why it's, it says uh, Elastic Compute Cloud. This EC2 service is used to create virtual machines in AWS cloud. Okay, so, uh, so I hope you uh, uh, understood the meaning of the word itself, Elastic Compute Cloud. Okay, and uh, uh, this service is used to create virtual machines in AWS cloud. Okay. Let's just read through the slide. Uh, as I mentioned, it is one of the most important services for most cloud companies. And this is the reason companies want to move to AWS. It allows you to use servers without buying the hardware. The hardware working behind the scenes is taken care by AWS. So we do not have to worry about its maintenance at all. And that's a big sigh of relief for companies. Next, uh, yes, it is used to create virtual machines in the cloud. We call them instances. So in AWS, the servers are called instances. If you want to learn uh, what are virtual machines and virtualization in general, I have already made a video on that. The link will be in the description of this video. Do check that out. Uh, it is uh, customizable with feature of instance types. The instance types decide how many CPU and RAM will be attached to your EC2 instance. We will learn about uh, that uh, shortly in this video in later slides. Then uh, pay for what you use. So EC2 are charged, EC2 instances are charged for two things in general. From the time the instance is in running status, you are charged for compute resources like CPU and RAM and storage as well. Interview question, if you stop the EC2 instance, are you still charged for it? Yes, we are still charged for storage resources, but not for compute when our EC2 instances is in stopped status. Remember this. Let us now learn what technology does AWS use to create these virtual machines. So AWS uses its own customized hypervisor called Zen Hypervisor. It follows type 1 bare metal implementation. So they install this hypervisor on top of physical server and create these virtual machines. Next is security groups. <clears throat> so security groups are really uh, are crucial to understand. I mean, if you want to work uh, in, 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 a, in a cloud role or if you want to appear for an interview as well. So you will, uh, will often be asked on security group concepts. So, so security group is like a virtual firewall that controls a traffic incoming and outgoing to your EC2 instance. So this is the standard icon for EC2 instance. Just remember this because you will see a lot of uh, I mean architectural diagrams where you will see this type of icon. So this represents EC2 instance. Okay. So security groups control the incoming and outgoing traffic to your EC2 instance. Okay. And talking technically, this security group is actually attached to another resource called ENI, which stands for Elastic Network Interface, which holds the IP address of your EC2 instance, the private IP address of your EC2 instance. So sometimes it is asked in the interviews, to which resource does security group attaches to? So in that case, you have to mention ENI, okay, Elastic Network Interface, which holds the IP address for the EC2 instance. So when you use a security group with EC2 instance, it, it is able to control incoming and outgoing traffic. Okay. And uh, 
uh, this is stateful in nature so let's understand the meaning of stateful okay this is also pretty important to understand because we have one more firewall called NACL or a network access control list which I'm going to talk about when I uh, talk about VPCs okay VPC concept so we're, we're going to look at that uh, in that video but uh, in this video I want to talk about the security groups and why they are stateful in nature so I have I've created one diagram to show it to you so suppose this is your EC2 instance okay and from here you have allowed uh, this internet access to your machine on HTTP port 80 for example okay so the meaning of stateful is when you are so in this case so, so, so just assume that you're trying to download a software from internet okay on port 80 using HTTP protocol okay so in this case the traffic is flowing from your instance to internet outside right on port 80 so the meaning of stateful is when you're trying to download something you're, you're sending a request to internet okay and whatever the response is is, is coming back it is also allowed by default on security groups so you, you you just have to specify the rule for this particular request and not for this request because this is the response of this request so the meaning of stateful is the traffic will be bi-directional so whatever you send outside will be allowed back in by default on a security group the meaning of security groups stateful nature okay similarly if you have another EC2 instance that is trying to uh, ping your uh, this server okay so in this case you have allowed the ping uh, traffic on the inbound interface of your EC2 so whatever response is, is going back is also allowed by default I mean you don't have to specify a separate rule for, the, for this, uh, this type of traffic so this is called stateful nature of security groups okay so this is also one of the most important concepts and sometimes it is asked in the interviews as well okay what is the meaning of stateful so, 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 so just remember this picture and I think you will be able to explain it all right all right so uh, then there's then there's one more uh, thing so you can add modify security groups at any time and the changes are going to be applied immediately you don't have to uh, you, know, you know restart your server or anything the changes are applied almost immediately okay when you make any changes to security group rules on inbound and outbound the changes will apply immediately just remember this and also uh, ec2s can use multiple security groups at once okay so so uh, there's an option with your ec2 instance that you can uh, attach multiple ip addresses or multiple ani's to your ec2 instance so for each eni that you attach to your instance you, you you are allowed five security groups at once okay so just remember for each eni that you attach to your ec2 instance you, you can attach five security groups at once okay all right so next is instance type so instance type decides compute memory and storage capabilities of your instance so it depends on what type of application you want to deploy on your ec2 instance you have to choose the right size of uh, your instance in terms of the compute and memory resources all right so let's check the official documentation given by aws which i've already opened in another tab so here you can see there are so many different types of uh, instance types available here and I'm going to be talk about the most important ones but if you want to learn about all of these you can go through this documentation okay so let's just learn about these so the first one is general purpose so general purpose means it provides you the balanced approach between the compute resources and cost to build EC2 instances so it is the good choice for most everyday tasks and when in doubt it is a good starting point for any server it means that when you are new to AWS and you're not sure which type, which instance type should I choose, you can always refer to this documentation to understand the different instance types and uh, the different configurations available. As you can see here, what type of configurations are available with different instance types, but you are still not sure, then you can always start with the general purpose ones, okay, to give you 
the starting point of your uh, EC2 instance uh, uh, creation journey. And then after you know that what type of instance is is uh, perfect for your application, you can always change the instance type of your instance later. Okay. So this is about the general purpose one. And I'm, I'm covering this because these questions are often asked in the interviews. Okay, so it is pretty important to understand the instance types and the most important instance types you should know by memory. Next is accelerated computing, which is to add capability of graphics cards. So if you want to add the hardware capability and uh, for example, you, you are working on uh, I mean, you don't, I mean, you're not working on it, but if someone needs to deploy uh, the uh, intense visual task application like AutoCAD, AutoCAD application is used to, to uh, draft, uh, you know, maps for buildings, for uh, houses. So they use AutoCAD application. So if you, if you, if you have an application like that, then you can go for accelerated computing instance types. Then the next one is compute optimized, where you optimize the CPU capabilities. It is ideal for media work like video transcoding. So just a little information about these instance types is more than sufficient. Okay. And then when you have the requirement, you can always refer to this page and choose the right instance type. Okay. Because there are, there is a lot of information available about these so you, you can I mean, go through this uh, when 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 you have the need to choose the right instance type for your application then next is a memory optimized which is ideal for big data work like statistics on website hits and a huge when you have a huge organizational data to work with you can go for memory optimized instance type then storage optimized means when you need the high storage performance for your application you can go for storage optimized instance types and it is already given here optimized to hold large amounts of data for extended periods of time all right uh, uh, that's all and uh, so, so that's all about the instance types one more thing i want to tell you about instance type is let me go to the documentation url again and here if you see Let's take the example of t3.micro. So this t here represents that instance type. In our case, this is general purpose instance type. This three represents the generation, which generation of instance type it is. So it is of third generation. Okay. And then this uh, dot micro, uh, this micro means it actually defines the number of vCPU and memory that you will get with your instance. If you see here, the micro has two, two vCPUs and one GB of RAM. But if you just increase it to uh, small, if you increase your uh, this name from uh, micro to small, then you get two vCPU and two GB RAM. And similarly, if you increase it, uh, increase it further to medium, then you will get two vCPU and four GB of RAM. And similarly, the size is also increasing, right? So the name, uh, so starting from nano to micro to small to medium large x large you uh, increase the resources on the instance types so in this case if you see vcpu is increasing from 2 to 4 and then to 8 and similarly the ram also it's increasing right and some other other resources as well like cpu credits per hour is also increasing so uh, I just wanted to talk about this naming convention here. Okay, so sometimes it is asked in the interview that what is the meaning of T3 dot small. So you can say that this T represents the instance type. This three represent the generation that we are uh, using the generation of instance type and small represents the uh, uh, amount of resources in terms of a vCPU, memory, storage and other uh, resources. Okay. The next is AMI, which we will learn a little later. So uh, uh, let's start to uh, create our first EC2 instance and see what all options are available in the AWS management console. So I'm, I'm logged into my uh, AWS management console and this is the default dashboard. Okay. To search for the service, EC2 service, you can use this search box. So just type EC2 here and you will get the name of the service. And if you just click on this star option, you will be able to mark it as favorite. 
and then it will appear here. So let's click on EC2. So this is the default landing page of EC2 service and you can see there are so many options. Okay, don't get uh, overwhelmed by this. You just have to learn a few options here. Okay, not all because all the options are for advanced users only. So just scroll down a bit and you will see the option to launch your instance. So just click on this launch instance button here to launch your first EC2 instance. Then you can put a name of your EC2 instance. For example, if I write a demo EC2, then just see what all options are available. So AMI, so AMI I'm going to cover just a little later, but just understand AMI as a, like a template to create your server, create your virtual machine. Meaning, for example, which operating system you want to use. I want to use, for example, I want to use this operating system, Amazon Linux. Amazon Linux is a Linux operating system given by AWS. Okay, so if I have to use this, that means I have to use the AMI related to this operating system. Okay, so AMI is like a template, it's written here also and AMI is a template that contains a software configuration like operating system, application server if any and applications required to launch your instance. So your operating system is hold inside an AMI, just remember this. Okay, so in, the, in, in, in my case I want to use Amazon Linux operating system so it is under this AMI, Amazon machine image, okay. We're going to be covering, uh, I mean, uh, we're going to create our own AMIs as well. Then here's the option of uh, choosing the architecture. So architecture, just don't do anything with it because generally we'll be using 64-bit x86 architecture to create our EC2 instances, but we do have the option of ARM-based uh, architecture as well, okay. but. Uh, Let's just keep it a default to 64-bit x86. Then scroll down and you will find the, the option of instance type. If you see here, this t2.micro is FTA eligible and it gives you one vCPU and one GB RAM. Okay, but uh, this will not be uh, I mean, worth to use this instance type if you have this application which uses more resources on your uh, this EC2 instance. So in that case, you have to change the instance type. Okay, so uh, you can search for any instance type here. Okay, and if, if, if you're not sure on what type of instance type you have to use, you have to refer the official documentation page, which I showed you, okay, depending on your requirement. For example, I want to use a memory optimized instance type. So I'll just go to this, this documentation page. I'm going to click on memory optimized option here and I can see all the different instance type with their current configuration like this. So this page is, is really important. I mean, you don't have to remember this by heart, but you should know the uh, the type of instance types available and some examples of it, I mean, where, where you will use it, okay? So in this way, you can search for the instance type of your choice depending on the application, and then you can choose it to create your EC2 instance, okay? So in our case, we'll just keep it to t2.micro because I don't want to go out of free tier segment All right, then key pair login. So here you have to choose the SSH key pair to log into your EC2 instance. So if you if you don't have the key pair created, you can just get uh, you can just click on this option to create the key pair. Okay, and then you can use it. Just remember uh, when I covered the video uh, this SSH video for uh, you know in in the in, in the in the Linux series, I I covered this command called SSH hyphen keygen to create the key pair from the command line interface. It is the same thing, but uh, it, it is being done from the UI. Okay, so I've already created one, one key pair, which I'm going to use right now. Or oh, let me create one key pair just to show you how it is done. Okay, so I'm going to create on this, uh, create new key pair. And I have to just give the name, let's write demo EC2. And uh, and uh, 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 just keep the options as, as default and just, cl just click on create key pair. And uh, it's going to show you, it's going to give you an, an option to save the key pair. Okay, so I'm going to uh, keep it in, inside keys here, uh, demo EC2. So uh, this is the private key. 
that will be using to authenticate to your uh, EC2 instance. Okay. So just uh, uh, save it. Done. And then I'm I'm going to use it here also. Okay. Demo EC2. So in this case, uh, uh, the public key will be attached to my EC2 instance, and the private key I've already downloaded to my laptop. Then network settings, here you will decide what network you are going to use. So let's just keep it as default for now because I am going to come up with a video on VPCs and then I am going to cover all the concepts on VPC and networking in AWS and then you will be able to understand this uh, networking uh, section here. Okay. So uh, let's just leave it as, as default apart from security groups. Okay. So as I mentioned. You, you have the option to create a security group from here or you can create a security group from the security group a dashboard as well. So let's just try to create our own security group and then we'll try, we will try to attach it to our EC2 instance. So for, for security group also you just, you just have to create this, these three lines on the EC2 service and then you can choose the security group option from here and open it in a new tab like this. So this is the security group dashboard and then you just have to click on create security group just give it a name let's write demo demo security group okay and uh, uh, some description uh, you can just copy and paste the security group name also just keep it simple and vpcs we we are not going to change anything in vpc we just have one vpc anyways so we just have to use that and i'm going to cover the concept of vpc in another video and here you have the the section to add the inbound and outbound rules okay so let's just try to create some inbound and outbound rules for our ec2 instance for example i want to allow ssh traffic to my ec2 instance from my laptop only from, from only from my laptop so how will i add the rule i'll click on add inbound rule add rule and in type i will choose ssh just choose ssh okay and then in source I can just choose my IP. Okay. In this way, I'm allowing SSH traffic to my EC2 instance only from my IP and, and not from anywhere else. So this is like a secured way of creating the, in, the inbound rule on the security group. Okay. So this is the way you create the security group rules. Okay. Then outbound, it is allowing everything by default. So let it be. Okay. So just let uh, this rule be there in your security group. So this is the, the default outbound rule which you get when you create your own security group. Then under tags, you can add the name of the security group. So let's just copy the same name, demo security group here and uh, copy and paste it here, create security group. So the security group is created. So just copy the name of the security group from here then go to your launch instances uh, section and you can choose the select existing security group and uh, you can just click on this button here and uh, just paste the name of the security group and then choose it like this so you have chosen the security group of your choice that you just created then storage uh, uh, let it be default because i'm going to come up with uh, a detailed video on uh, ebs volumes so this is the section of EBS volumes where you attach the elastic block store volume to your EC2 instance. So I'm going to come up with another video where I'm going to cover all the storage basics as well. Okay. To make you understand the concept of storage in AWS slightly better. So let's just keep it as default for now. Then go to advanced details. <clears throat> in advanced details, we, we don't have to do anything here. Okay. Just, just keep everything as default. Don't do anything for now. Okay because uh, some of the options are for advanced users only and we don't have to worry about that so just just keep it as a, a default for now and just scroll to the very last option which says user data this section is important to understand and often asked in the interviews okay so this is the section where you can write a bash script for your ec2 instance which means just after your instance is in running status it is going to execute all the commands that you specify here okay and it uses the format of a bash script remember from our linux for devops a series where i showed you uh, the concept of how to write a bash script in uh, in linux so it uses the same format so it is the script file here and you have to specify all the options like a bash script 
So if you remember, the bash script always starts with shebang, which is hash exclamation mark. It is called shebang. Then your default shell, which is slash bin slash bash. Then on, on the next line, you can start writing your commands. For example, and let's use sudo options with all the commands here. So sudo space, for example, I want to run. I want to update the system. So I'll do yum update hyphen y. Next, if I want to install uh, Apache web server, for example, I want to uh, install Apache web server from this script. I mean, I don't want to run the, the command manually. I just want this instance to have Apache by default when the instance is running, when instance is a running status. So I can do sudo yum install httpd space hyphen y. Okay, I can start the service also using sudo system ctl start httpd okay and similarly you can add multiple commands and all all these commands are going to run just after your instance is launched so that's all you have to take care of as of now okay in terms of how to create an ec2 instance to deploy your first application and just click on launch instance it's going to take like couple of minutes to come up all right so i'm going to pause the video now and we'll resume once the instance is in running status all right, so the instance has come up, it's in running status. So let's try to connect to it. Choose the instance, click on connect, click on uh, example command, just copy it, go to your mobile XTERM terminal. So I'm connected to the instance now and uh, let's become root. All right, and uh, let's check a few things here. So if you remember, I uh, configured some user data scripts. So let's go back to our management console and see those now. So I'll click on the instance ID and to check the existing user data that you applied on the instance, you can click on actions, go to instance settings, and then go to added user data option. So if you if you remember if you see this uh, I configured it to be uh, to have uh, the packages updated all the packages should be updated and uh, it should also have the Apache web server installed okay I mean I did not install it but I just uh, wrote in the script in, in in the user data section so that it is installed automatically when I uh, log into the instance and also the uh, the web server a daemon should be in start status because I, I uh, you know, I mean, use this command also systemctl start httpd, which means the httpd daemon should be in start status. So let's check if this user data actually ran successfully on our instance or not. So if I go back, if I do systemctl status httpd, and you can see. Okay, it's an active running status. So you can see the status is active running. So uh, when I installed, when I uh, included this in the script, the HTTPD package was installed. To confirm the HTTPD package, you can also use RPM query command. If you remember, RPM query, then the name of the package, which is HTTPD. And you can see the package is also installed. Okay, so this means the user data script that we ran was ran I mean, it ran successfully on our EC2 instance. So this is the way you can uh, configure it. And if you have to edit it, <clears throat> so right now, if, if you see, I, 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 I don't see the option to edit it. So you have to stop the instance, then edit it, and then start the instance again. And all these scripts will be uh, executed again. All right. Now, one more thing I want to let you know that <clears throat> suppose the instance type that we chose is t2.micro, but suppose we have an application that needs more resources okay so there is always an option to change the instance type but to, to do that you have to stop the instance remember this because it is asked in the interviews as well okay how to change the instance type of a running instance so first thing you have to say is you have to stop the instance and then you will get the option to change instance type because if i click on actions right now if i click on instance settings 
uh, change instance type you see the option is grayed out right now so you you have to remember that you have to stop the instance or change the instance type okay so this is how you create an ec2 instance with all the options that i uh, told you <clears throat> and then how to use user data to include some uh, additional commands that you want to run after the instance launch all right now let's let's go back to a slide and finish the last part of this video which is okay which is not okay which is ami yeah which is ami so as i mentioned <clears throat> ec2 ami it has all the information you need to launch an ec2 instance we saw on the aws management console that when we chose amazon linux ami uh, we have this uh, os on our ec2 instance to check that you can go back to the terminal and you can run the command called cat space slash etc slash os release and you can see it has amazon linux operating system okay so we chose the ami for amazon linux and uh, we have amazon linux on our ec2 instance okay but <clears throat> uh, you can do some some other stuff as well with ami okay so it, it, it works as a template to create instances that we just saw but when you uh, i mean uh, when you're using an ec2 ami okay what does it include if someone asks you so it has ebs snapshots ebs stands for elastic block store snapshots ami launch permissions block device mappings to specify for the attached volumes all right and uh, you, you i mean you can ignore this for now because i am going to cover this in the next section in the next video where i talk about the ebs volumes okay so i'm going to cover all all this in much more detail there but just remember that it is actually used to uh, take backup okay it is actually used to take uh, backups of your uh, ec2 instance as a whole okay so uh, there are two things actually you can take the backup of individual volumes if i go back to ec2 instance dashboard here if you just scroll down a bit and click on storage section since i mean i'm i'm going to cover storage in much more detail but i just want to show you that each ec2 instance will have at least one storage device attached which holds your operating system details and other data right so the, so there are two types of backup in general that you can take of your ec2 instance you can take the backup of your storage volumes here you can get a snapshot of the volume which i'm going to cover in the next video but you also have the option to take the ami so there are differences between ami and snapshot okay i'm going to cover this in much more detail in the next video so don't worry about that but i just wanted to give you a very high level overview of ec2 ami which is uh, i mean uh, which has all the information we need to launch an ec2 instance okay and uh, it it it, it uh, 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 includes the EBS snapshots, AMI launch permissions, and block device mappings. So I'm going to talk about this in the next video, and it also works as a backup. Okay, if, if you have taken uh, one uh, uh, AMI of your instance, then that AMI will hold all the data that was there at the time of taking the AMI of the instance. And then when you launch an instance from that AMI, it's going to have the same data as the AMI. So this is. Uh, one more way of taking the backup of your EC2 instance. Just get an AMI and store it. Okay. And then you can also launch multiple instances with the same configuration. All right. So, so all this, uh, I mean, all, all the practicals on EC2 AMI, I'm going to cover in the next video. All right. Then apart from this, there's, there's one more important thing that I want to talk about is EC2 pricing models, because this is asked in the interviews a lot. Okay. So, this part is theoretical, but really uh, 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 critical to understand from uh, uh, interview point of view, especially. So <clears throat> if someone asks you, okay, what are the EC2 pricing models? So the first one is on demand, which is also called pay per second. It is best for short term app development and testing, which means that suppose you want to do some random testing on some application. So you can use the on demand pricing model to I mean, create one EC2 instance, okay, do your testing and then terminate it. Okay, so uh, this follows a pay as you go pricing model and uh, there's no long term commitment because you're just 
you know I mean, whenever you, you need an instance just uh, spin it up then use it and then terminate it so there is no commitment right so uh, I mean uh, for how much time you have used the instance you, you just have to pay for that period and that's it okay so there is no long term commitments and yes it has the option to auto scale itself as well if needed so it supports unpredictable workloads as well all right so the way we launch the instance from the ec2 management console this is called on demand instance okay if i go back to ec2 again it is on demand we just went to the ec2 dashboard and we need an instance we just clicked on this launch instance okay chose some options and and uh, just clicked on launch instance and we uh, i mean we were able to clear uh, when we were able to create an instance so this is the on demand way of creating the instance remember this okay the next is saving plans <clears throat> so saving plans is used to save costs of course okay how you can save the cost you can reserve capacity when usage is constant the meaning of this is suppose you have a production ec2 instance and uh, it is running a web server application for you and you know that this web server has to run for the next 5 years it is this is confirmed okay so in that case instead of using the on demand way of creating the instance you can reserve the capacity for 5 years okay the only only drawback is in this way you have to i mean in this plan you have to pay upfront but also you, you get huge discounts so you can save up to 72% of the cost as compared to on demand instances if you use a savings plan and a lot of companies use it when they when they know that uh, some particular instance has to run for the next 3 uh, years or 5 years okay so in that case they can reserve that capacity the only drawback is they have to pay upfront but but uh, they get huge discounts up to 72% okay and uh, it supports uh, uh, it supports a long term uninterrupted usage as i mentioned when you reserve the capacity the the uh, so that instance is just uh, uh, assigned to you and and you can use it for long term okay then there is one more thing which is spot instances so what is the meaning of spot instances uh, is so what aws does whatever unused ec2 capacity is available okay uh, they put it for a bidding that means they will put a price that uh you can buy this ec2 instance on this price and then you can put your bid as well that i want to buy an instance on this price if these two prices match then you get the instance from aws okay and then when the price changes uh they take the instance back from you so this is the way to use the unused capacity by uh, by uh, uh aws but of course since uh, uh there is no surety of i mean when you when when you will have the instance okay running so this type of pricing cannot be used for production based application it can only be used for non mission critical apps or data or i mean if you have an application with flexible start and end times then also it can use and this is the cheapest pricing model available in ec2 okay so this is about the the pricing models of ec2 which is really uh, critical to understand then there is one more uh the pricing model which is called dedicated hardware which i did not include here because it is slightly different so in that case what happens you get the main physical server assigned to you but of course you have to pay a lot so that is one of the uh, i mean most costly options that are available in ec2 but you can get the physical hardware uh i mean if you need it all right so that's all about the pricing model and uh, that's all i want to cover in this video in ec2 all right i hope you you got all the concepts right if you have any doubts please reach out to me in in the comment section and i am going to answer all your queries all right guys that's all for this video and i am going to see you in the next one